Hello, fellow actors. I'm sure we've all heard the same spiel about moving to Los Angeles for your acting career. Only serious actors pursue their career in Los Angeles. If you don't move to Los Angeles, then you really don't care about your career. You can't have an acting career if you don't live in Los Angeles. I'm here to tell you why that is complete bullshit. <laughs> to be clear, I do think that there are more opportunities here. Hopefully after this video you have some super real expectations that if you do try to pursue moving out to Los Angeles, what you can expect. So here are my reasons why I think that if you are an actor, you should not move out to Los Angeles. Number one, the cost of living is ridiculous. I'm sure that we've all heard, oh, you're moving out to Los Angeles? Well, it's expensive. I never really was able to grasp how expensive until I got here. First things first, before I moved out here, I saved up $8,000 so that I would have a really good start. I figured with $8,000, I'd be able to get a place, maybe search for a job if I didn't have one yet, and do some acting classes. Maybe even get new headshots. I don't know, I thought $8,000 was a pretty good chunk of change to get started. Whoa, was I wrong. Let me tell you how fast that $8,000 went. Like that. It was gone in two weeks. Here's how I spent $8,000 in Los Angeles in two weeks. The moving company to get out here cost $3,500. I picked a really crappy moving company that was super cheap just so I could get out here, and then they tried to gouge me for about $700 more when they got here and tried to hold my stuff. That's a side note. If you think it'll be less stressful to let someone else move your stuff, it's not. It's so stressful to be in a brand new environment and not have your stuff and not know what that moving company is gonna do with it. I've also done my research since that, and unless you're planning on paying someone $7,000 and up to move a one to two bedroom, I would just move it yourself. When I move back to Iowa, probably sooner than later, I will 100% move my own stuff. So here's how that $8,000 was spent. Moving company was $3,500. Next, I moved into a two bedroom apartment and it cost 2060. That is before the security deposit. That is before the pet rent. Altogether with the security deposit, the pet deposit and pet rent, it was 3,105. Then you have to set up all of your utilities. If you're renting, you have to put down a security deposit for your utilities. Now those are all living costs that are pretty much to be expected when you're moving anywhere. However, there was some costs that were associated with moving to Los Angeles that I didn't foresee, and here are what those are. My insurance for my car tripled. Because it's so much more expensive and there's more liability for your insurance company, it's gonna skyrocket. Chicago or New York, I'm sure it would be comparable, but if you're moving from a small town in the Midwest, it's going to hurt. Maybe I could sell my car. No, you can't. I live in a suburb, it's pretty far outside of the main Los Angeles market. If you wanted to live in downtown LA, that's totally up to you. You can do that. Just know that what you're saving in gas money is going to be tripled on your rent. Your rent will hurt if you move downtown LA. Don't move to Hollywood. Don't move to Hollywood. Don't move to Hollywood. Okay. <laughs> Don't do it. Los Angeles and California also have a gas tax. That means that while I was used to paying about $2.20 for a gallon of gas, it skyrocketed to $4 a gallon of gas. And since I live outside of Los Angeles, I'm driving a lot more. Instead of paying $20 every two weeks, I'm now paying about $35 a week. And the last thing that hurts so bad, it is so expensive to eat here. And I'm not talking about going out to eat, although that hurts a lot more too. And the quality is worse. Ugh. I'm talking about going to the grocery store and picking up food that you can make at home. I have never missed Hy-Vee so much in my life than when I moved here. Butter for two sticks, that's half a cup of butter, is $4.95 for butter. Grocery costs probably went up to, I wanna say seven to $800 a month. If you're looking at it like that, my $8,000 went like that. Thank God I had a job before I got here because if I didn't, I would be completely screwed. I think I've, I've overdone it with the, the cost of living. So let's move on. Reason number two, it is a digital world right now. If you're an actor or an actress and you wanna live in your hometown, 
there are ways that you can still make connections with casting directors that work here. I'm going to be clear and say you will have a better shot of it if you live here, but it's not impossible. Look up your favorite directors on IMDB Pro, look up the stuff they've done that you wanna be on, and go and search for them. They have Twitter accounts, they have Facebook pages, they have all of that stuff. If you're really dedicated, you can even look them up to see if they're doing any casting director workshops and go and fly out and take their class. That'll be a hell of a lot cheaper than moving your ass out here. <laughs> I'm very passionate about this, I'm sorry I keep cussing. I'm angry, I'm angry! <laughs> so follow them on Twitter, follow them on Facebook. Don't add their personal accounts on Facebook if you don't know them, that's kind of weird. Follow them on Instagram, those are all public and they expect you to have a conversation with them. Engage them that way, and that can be a really good start to a relationship with a casting director that works out here but doesn't need you here. Something else is that you can always add yourself to backstage, and you can add yourself to Actors Access. Those are websites you can be anywhere in the world. Just know that if you get called in for an audition, you need to be able to get here within one or two days. So don't do that if you aren't planning on getting out here for those auditions. If you do that with Actors Access, you can get breakdown services and only apply for the things that you can self-tape yourself. Self-tapes happen all the time, and if you are good at what you do, just stay put. Contact them on their social media, make sure you're doing self-tapes, and make sure they're good quality self-tapes, and you can honestly stay put until you have to come out here to tape. That brings us to reason number three. Small markets are so much more forgiving. Out here, you can have the best headshots, you can have the best demo reel, you can pay $2,000 to have a custom demo reel made for you. The problem with that is that everyone else can do that too. Next point, you might be closer to a bigger market than you think. If you're in a small market, and I'm not talking as small as Des Moines, when I was living in Des Moines, you would think that my closest market would have been Chicago because it's a six hour drive. However, three hours north from me was Minneapolis, Minnesota. I did everything in Minnesota. Best Buy commercial, Target commercials, that's where they shot. I actually became SAG eligible by taping a feature film in Minnesota. I'm planning on doing a video on that soon on how I got SAG eligibility while living in Iowa. And if you're planning on staying in your state and not moving to Los Angeles, I encourage you to watch it. There are so many other markets that you are completely overlooking because you've been told that Los Angeles and New York and Chicago are the only places to go. In a small market, you don't even really need great headshots. I encourage you to all get very good competitive headshots. When I was living in Iowa, I did go to Chicago just to have my headshots done. You have to get your headshots done by someone that knows what they're doing to be competitive in a larger market. If all you wanna do is your small market stuff, that is completely fine. Get a really nice headshot, and you are golden. They don't even require you to have demo reels because they know that they're harder to get in your smaller markets. The other really great thing about working in a smaller market is that everybody kind of knows you. Here, just breaking in to that outer shell of the inner circle is so difficult. People spend five, six, seven, ten years just trying to get those contacts because they're so secluded and they're so out of reach. In smaller markets, it's really, really easy to break into that. The thing that Los Angeles and small markets have in common is that they both have that inner circle, the people that they always want to work with. But in a smaller market, there's less people to choose from. When I lived in a smaller market, I did about $12,000 a year just on acting. Out here, I don't know that I will make that much, but it's only been three months, so we'll give it a chance. I'm not super confident that I can average $12,000 living in Los Angeles, so we'll see. I'll check in on it later. The final argument I have to not move to Los Angeles is that video production is so much cheaper than it used to be. We used to have to use actual film where we would burn film and it would be so expensive just to buy those reels of film and it would be even more expensive to take shot after shot after shot to try and get it right. Today we have DSLRs, we have 4K, we have mini magics, we have reds, all of these cameras that are so much more accessible that give us the same image as a really well-produced film. This is really great news for writers and it's also really great news for actors who have written their own stuff that want to try and produce it for cheap, cheap, cheap. 
you can produce something that looks just as good as the stuff that they produce out here. Know that you're not going to have five million dollars and know that you can use specific local talent. That's another great thing about staying in your market is that once you break into that circle, you're going to be able to pick and choose those people that are competitive and will do a great job on your film. And here's a bonus for you that I didn't even think about until just now. If you're location scouting, they know you. If you're in a small, small town, you might even get the benefit of using locations absolutely free. And those are my reasons for actors and actresses to not move out to Los Angeles. Wow, Patricia, this was really negative. You shouldn't discourage people from chasing their dreams. Unsubscribe. Here's the thing. If this video discouraged you from moving out to Los Angeles, then you shouldn't be moving out to Los Angeles. This video is full of very real expectations just to live out here. That's not even including the acting and breaking into that inner shell I was talking about earlier. This is just surviving. I'm going to make another vlog about the expectations of being an actor or an actress here, but that's a whole video on its own. This is already probably a little too long, but I wanted to touch on everything that was in my mind. The last thing I'd want to do is to give you that poster child, reach for the stars, follow your dreams, anyone can do it if you believe enough, because I don't want you to be encouraged to move here and then in three months you're living on the streets and then you can't watch my videos. <laughs> That's not why I don't want you to live on the streets. It's because there's already enough people living on the streets. And it, at that point, it's not even worth it because you can't pursue acting if you can't take a shower. You're not gonna get anywhere. That's just, that's just how it is. They don't like stinky actors. Also, this video is gonna be more positive than you think because what I'm trying to tell you deep down in this video is that there is nothing wrong with being a small market actor. You can make $10,000, $12,000 in your own market. If not, a market super close by like I did with Minnesota. Don't let anybody tell you that you are not a real actor or a professional actor just because you didn't want to give up the life that you had. There is nothing wrong with wanting your daily life to not be a struggle. Los Angeles is very high risk, high reward, and it is a huge risk. I've already met people that have been here for over 20 years in the business and they're no further along than I was back at home. If you've watched this entire vlog and you decide, I don't care, I'm still gonna move out to Los Angeles, who am I to judge you? I did the same thing. Obviously, I am here right now. So if you do want to move out to Los Angeles, here's my advice. Have a job before you move out here. Save up $15,000 before you move here. If you don't have a job lined up like I did, you need to save more. I know that sounds like a lot, but you saw how fast $8,000 went. That's a down payment on a house where I'm from. I cannot stress enough how much money you need to live out here. So get a job before you move with $15,000 or save up more money, like $20,000, if you're gonna come out here without a job to have that time to look for a job. Lucky for you, just like the entertainment industry, job sites are also going digital. That means that you can apply for jobs when you're not even here. That's how I got my job. Lastly, I've already said this, do not move to Hollywood. New actors that move here all think that I'm just gonna go to Hollywood, that's where everything's at. That is where the businesses are, but you do not want to live there. It's dirty, it's expensive. Hollywood Boulevard are where all of the homeless people hang out. They also just live there. So you'll see a lot of tents, a lot of homeless people sleeping on the streets, and you'll be paying $3,000 to live in a shoe. And it'll smell like a shoe too. And weed, a weed filled shoe. And that's all I have for this video. I know that it's not what a lot of people like to hear. In fact, one of my friends was really, really mad at me because he thinks I'm being super negative. If you disagree with me, tell me why. Did you move to Los Angeles and you were completely fine? If you had a different experience than me, drop it in the comments below because I'd love to hear about it. I've only been here for three months, so maybe the homeless situation gets better? Probably not. I've only been here for three months, but I can't foresee my groceries or my gas getting any cheaper. 
That's all for this video. Tune in next week so I can post those other videos that I was talking about. And I have to go because the Super Bowl has already started and my team has never been in it. Go Chiefs. Bye. In my game day. Yes.